And I've lived in uh, a teepee now for 34 years, so I must be extremely eccentric and completely, utterly mad. The reason why we did it in the first place is that um, we were all poor, like you probably are. And we wanted to live in the countryside. We wanted to find a way we could do it. And uh, in the early days of uh, the hippie story, which is the end of the 60s and the beginning of the 70s, we came across the teepee, the, the North American uh, Plains Indians teepee. And uh, what was so wonderful about it was that it was cheap, it was very portable, so you could take it from festival to festival easily, you could live in it, because you can actually live in it properly. You have a fire in the middle of the teepee and, and with the fire in the middle of the teepee you've got uh, warmth and light and somewhere for the family to gather round. So a teepee is not just a tent, uh, it is actually a, makes a really good home. My name's Emily, I've lived here for four years and I've got a little girl who's two and that's one of the massive pros of living here because she has uh, more freedom than she would do in, in a city or a town or even on a house on a hill because we've got a community here and there's other children here so they pop in and out. We run a kids jam um, like once or twice a month and all the kids can come and play music. Um, we have like little community things happening in the big lodge and I just think it's really nice to live away from mainstream society. I mean, it's not the good life, don't get me wrong. It's, you know, it's not like something pretentious and something ex elite or exclusive. We are living quite simply um, and we don't have a bathroom inside and uh, we, uh, we go outside to a toilet, we wash up outside. But it keeps you fresh, it keeps your energy going. My garden isn't actually here really, this isn't the best place for a garden. I've got a polytunnel there next to my teepee. I'll grow some of my food on this bit of garden here during the summer, but my main garden is in a place that gets a lot more sun. I've not planted anything since last, last year. And you can see I've got loads of greens to eat up. And uh, another really essential thing to, to running a teepee is, is having a decent wood pile. So just come and look at my wood pile. And the idea here is to try to live with a smaller carbon footprint. To be perfectly honest, I've still got quite, quite a carbon footprint. So uh, I don't uh, claim any um, great uh, vir virtue for myself for, for living like this. My carbon footprint is just a little bit smaller than what yours is. It's not it's probably not a great deal smaller. So I'm, I'm, I'm not a saint and you're the sinners. It's nothing like that. The wood pile I'm using at the moment is, uh, is, is all this wood here. And it's, it's all bone The dry. reason why we're here and why there aren't a lot more communities like this is that we did f actually find two quite eccentric farmers who were happy to sell us a field, a little bit of land at, as we could afford. We save up our money Go to the farm and say, we've got another, we save us another thousand pounds, Mr. Busk. Can we, can we buy this field? And he said, oh, oh, yeah. okay, and he's, and, but land isn't sold like that. People have to work hard at their life here, so it's more of a physical life. So you're more a kind of working at your life, your garden, growing your vegetables and your fruit. It is a step back in some ways, but actually it's connecting back to your spirit. When the place was first set up, people did try a kind of home education thing, and I think they, there was a, kind of a, a little school building. People found it quite hard to maintain a kind of regular school thing within the community. Uh, I think just because of the amount of time you have to spend doing a daily task. Nearly all children access the local schools, either the, the primary or the secondary one. So it's kind of... Uh, which brings with its own kind of um, problems. I mean, you know, there's a kind of well, added pressure then to, to for the children to be like clean and tidy and all that. So you kind of there's that's quite a lot of work goes into maintaining all that. But uh, it seems to be the way that works best. Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> Whoa. Let's rock this out. 
Oh, yeah, they're still there. Oh, thank goodness for that. All of them. Have you counted them? There's a nasty counter. Hey, Kai, can I have the last the sandwich? They're labelled, aren't they? <laughs> no, 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 that one over there. <laughs> what happens to the leftover gap? Does it like get distributed amongst the poor of the parish and stuff? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm usually so quite poor at the end of my party, so yeah, it does rather. Right? <laughs> <laughs> to me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rick. Happy birthday to you. Whoa, thank you. Anarchism without respect doesn't have a chance. But with respect, having no leaders is, is a viable way of doing things. Basically, you get the amount of respect that you deserve. If you're a twat, then people aren't going to respect much of what you say. Uh, if you've got a reputation for, for being dishonest, people aren't going to have much respect for you. And so, really, if there is a hierarchy, it's a natural hierarchy, which is built out, built up, not of, uh, of uh, your position, but of the respect that other people have for you. And I'd be one of the elders in this place, but that doesn't mean that I'm one of the leaders any more than anything else. In fact, leadership isn't a, a status. Leadership is, it should, it's really more of a verbal thing, a verb rather than a noun. Um, people lead at different moments. If somebody's good at something, and uh, they'll, they'll lead the group that's doing it. What, what else is really essential to, to being alive and living? Um, what you do with your poo is pretty important. So uh, why don't you follow me and I'll show you what I do with my poo. This quaint little shed here is actually my toilet. And uh, you can just have a peek and you can see it. There are conflicts and arguments that do come. We don't have general, we don't have irregular meetings. That's a thing, which is a kind of thing which some people in the valley ca are calling for, and some people say, well, it wouldn't really do any good. So there's a kind of there's a bit of a difference of opinion as to whether we should have regular meetings or not. But certainly, what has happened in the past, if there has been if there have been people that have caused a, a significant amount of trouble, they have been asked to leave. So that's quite quite uh, make. It's easier than uh, just digging a hole in the ground and pooing in it like you're having to do. Uh, and behind you is uh, all the woods. Teepee Valley's not organised like other community groups, like other off-grid communities. It's, you know, there's about two or three rules I've heard of. It's, and people, I suppose resolving things, it comes down to, it's not an official meeting. It's neighbour will talk to neighbour, who'll talk to neighbour, who'll talk to the person. The elders here are really good you've met Rick and you can go to them and you can talk about things and they have got an influence. We're just ordinary people here and we relate to each other in the way that people everywhere relate to each other. A reason in the past has been paedophilia. If somebody is, is, is accused or thought of, of being a paedophile then it causes a great deal, deal of anxiety and uh, they rapidly get chucked out and I, I, I dare say owing to the, the anxiety caused by the subject that even some people not guilty of it might even have been pushed on because they weren't even given a, a chance to <laughs> we don't want them to prove they are do we you know what I mean so it's, it's very it's issues like that can be very difficult and uh, people can react in the same way that anybody else can react you see we're because we're, we're, we're hippies it doesn't actually mean that we really live in a state of blissful love and peace. We're just ordinary people like anybody else's. These three solar panels give me all the, all the electricity I need. In my teepee I've got uh, electric lights, um, I, I run a DVD player sometimes, uh, I run a radio and a CD player. Um, I have got a laptop computer but I don't run it here really because uh, there's no internet access anywhere near here. There's no mobile, no mobile phone connection or anything. It's, we're really in an, a beautifully sheltered area. I only just get to uh, Radio 4. You've seen the solar panels. This is where I store the electricity. Just down there, see? That, oh, I would suggest, I'm only suggesting, 
that there's a kind of basic paganism to everybody. It doesn't matter what religion you're a member of. You, there's a basic paganism. By that I mean that um, <coughs> there, there is or ought to be a, a love for nature in the hearts of everybody. Uh, whatever religion you think you've got, if, there should be that, and that's that's the th that's the common thing in our spirituality is our love for nature. Basically, it doesn't matter how you express it.